So let's get started with the labs. We will go through three labs today. Um, we will start with simple. Um, project number one is where you will do the first, the most fundamental project of any microcontroller engineer uh, would ever do, and that is to blink uh, the light on and off. Um, a second project we will go to uh, using music and using other sensors on the launch pad to make something even cooler. Um, in the last project, we will work with something that's uh, like, a, like a very everyday toy. You, we will make a magic eight ball out of the launch pad. And then based on that, we can decide on what we're going to have for lunch. All right, so Adrian will start off with the first project. Cool, thanks, Zoon. Uh, yeah, so before we jump to the first project, we've got some boxes and goodies in front of you. Um, so the one inside of the black box, that's the launch pad. So you guys can go ahead and tear into it and pull the launch pad out. Um, and inside of that box should be a red rectangle, and that's what we call the launch pad. That is our microcontroller development tool um, that we're going to use to, uh, to do some of these projects here. So I'll give you guys a second uh, to open it. OK, sweet. All right, I see lights everywhere, so I think we're in good shape. Um, awesome. So that means our launch pad is now connected to the computer. It's receiving power. Um, and our launch pad is actually preloaded with some demo code. So there's, there's already some, some code inside of the launch pad that tells it what to do when it receives power. Um, so we're actually going to program over that example firmware or example software. Um, and that's what we're going to do by blinking an LED. Um, which is something that we call a light. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that term. So LED stands for light emitting diode. Um, so it's a lot of big words, but really what it means is it's a, it's a simple light. Um, and that's going to be what we use to have the launch pad communicate back to us by blinking that light at different speeds and different patterns. Um, so we already did this step. We connected the launch pad over USB to the PC. So good job. Step number one complete. Um, the next step is we're going to move on to the computer now. And we're going to launch the software tool that Zoom introduced called Energia. Um, Energia is, uh, has a little uh, icon here. So if you can find that on your desktop, just double click it. And that will open up the, uh, the tool. And that's what we're going to use to create code and create software that we're going to put inside of the Launchpad brain. Um, so once you open up the, uh, the tool, you should get a window that kind of looks like this. And the first step um, is to, to follow this, uh, this directory or this path here. So if you click on Tools, Board, um, you'll have the option to select Launchpad with this funny name here, MSP430G2553. And that is the part number for the microcontroller brain that we're using. So we're basically just telling our tool on the computer uh, what kind of microcontroller brain we're, we're programming. Um, so if you just follow that path here, um, and you can see a little screenshot, um, that'll configure your tool so that it knows what it's doing. Um, awesome. So Project Blinky. So again, LED stands for Light Emitting Diode, and that's what we're going to use to, to blink the light. Um, the launch pad itself actually has two of these LEDs. There's a red one and a green one. Um, and they're down here on the bottom of the board. So you can, you've got a red one and a red one here and a green one here. Um, so they're really, really small. But once we, uh, once we program it, we're actually going to see that light blinking in, in different patterns. Uh, the goal for this specific example is we want to blink that LED 10 times, and 10 times only. Um, so that's going to be our first project to basically show that Energia, the software tool, can interface with the microcontroller um, and do exactly what it is we want to do. Um, so to do that, Energia comes with a lot of example code. So there's a lot of examples already preloaded inside of the tool. Um, and what that means is that you don't have to write everything from scratch. You can use one of these examples, um, and if it's exactly what you want, then perfect. You don't have to do anything. You can just use what already exists. Um, or if it's really close to what you want, you can actually use that code example and modify it a little bit um, to create whatever it is you're trying to create. Um, so the whole idea here is reuse and not having to reinvent the wheel every single time. Um, if you can find a code example that's 80% of what you want, you should start from there. Um, and I think that's a really important part of, of making things and actually being an engineer, is, is making sure that you're aware of what's already available for you. Um, so to find this example, um, just follow these, uh, these steps here. If you just go to File, Examples, uh, 0.educationalbp, Chapter 5, and Project 3 LED Blink. So it's kind of a long path. Uh, but if you follow that, you should find the, uh, the example code that we're going to be using today. Cool. Um, so I guess before we jump into this project and look at the code, let's think about what we have to do. So we want to blink the light, right? And as Zoong mentioned, the microcontroller brain has these little pins or legs, and that's what reaches out of the microcontroller. Um, and those pins is what interacts with the external world. Uh, in this case, 
it's talking to the LED. So if you were to draw a simple picture of kind of what that looks like, it'll basically be this little microcontroller brain. Just looks like a rectangle, right? Nothing fancy. And you can see it right there in front of you in the middle of your launch pad. Um, and it has these little silver connectors on the side of it. And it looks kind of like a bug, look, kind of like a centipede. Right? And there's 10 on each side. And each of those legs or pins are connected to different components of the launch pad. Uh, some are connected to the lights. Some are connected to the buttons. Some are just exposed, which allows you to connect external components to the launch pad. Um, and that's how some of the booster packs, those modules that Zoom talked about, actually plug onto the launch pad, is by connecting to these different legs. Um, and one of those legs is actually connected to the LED that we want to blink. So the first step that we'll have to do is actually tell the launch pad where that LED is so it knows which leg to, to use. Um, and that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do inside of our code. Um, so the first step is, again, setting the pin as an output. So we say, hey, LED pin, we were, you're going to be an output. You're going to be outputting current through that pin. And that's what's going to cause that LED light to turn on. Um, so that's the first step that we'll have to do in software. Uh, secondly, we're going to do a, a, what we call a loop. And a loop is something that we're going to repeat over and over again. Um, and in this case, since we want the LED to blink only 10 times, uh, we're just going to turn it on and off 10 times to cause the blinking pattern. Um, so I just said a lot of things. But once you look at the code, we'll see exactly what we're talking about. Um, so if you guys take a look at the code today, um, it should be right there in front of you now that you've opened up that example. Um, that's exactly what's happening. And the code inside of there, there's some text that's green in color. And that green text is what we call comments. And comments are meant for you as the user, or the student, or the programmer. Um, and those green comments allow you to, you to understand what's happening inside of the code. Um, so you can take a look at that to kind of understand what's happening at each line. Um, so now that we kind of have a better understanding of what's happening, we can actually click this little button here that looks like an arrow. And that's going to download that code that's inside of your software tool into the microcontroller brain. And then suddenly, the microcontroller is going to do exactly what that program told it to. Um, so go ahead and click that button. And you should see a couple of things happening on the computer. Um, but by the end of it, your launch pad will have the new firmware, the new software that you downloaded to the microcontroller. And then keep an eye on the launch pad. Because once you do that, the code will immediately start running. Um, and make sure that that green LED blinks only 10 times, because that's what we told it to do. Is it blinking? Let's see, I see some head nodding. Did you keep count? Yeah, how many times? 10, yes. Awesome. Cool, how's yours going here, buddy? Cool, I think it's uh, this guy right here. So that should take the code from the computer and shoot it through the USB cable into the microcontroller brain. Congratulations, you guys are one step closer to being an engineer. That's awesome. Um, so we just blinked that green LED 10 times. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's not quite as cool as a teddy bear hugging you, but this is one step closer in that direction. Um, so now that we have this code example, there's a couple of things that we can change. Um, and, and this is a good sort of a project to introduce a concept of reuse, right? With this exi existing code example, the green LED is blinking 10 times. Um, what if I want the red LED to blink instead? What do I have to change? Or uh, what if I want it to blink faster or slower? What are the, some of the things I have to change inside of the code to make that happen? Um, so I'm going to challenge you guys to actually take a look at that code example that's in front of you and try to figure out what things you can change to either make the LED blink faster or maybe make the red LED blink instead of the green one. Um, and by going through the process of, of trial and error, a lot of the times will lead to innovation. Um, and I think that's something that we want to challenge you guys here to do today. So go ahead, and we'll give you a few minutes to dive into the code. Um, and, and again, try to change some of these parameters here. You know, Maybe instead of blinking 10 times, make it blink 3 times or 100 times. Um, and, and try to keep count. <laughs> so uh, we'll let you guys do that, and we'll walk around and try to help you here. Cool. What are you trying to do here? Well, I already blink, made it blink five times. Oh, man. So I'm trying to change the speed. Yeah. Speed racer. Good job. All right. 578. Cool. Five, that's a lot of blinking. What do you think that's going to be? It's going to work. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. You guys did it. So it looks like the first thing you guys tried to do was change how many times it blinked. And you guys went from 10, some, someone went to like 500 something. So <laughs> pretty cool. 
Cool. Well, I think I think that was it for Project Blinky. So I think we, we were able to blink one light. We blinked both lights. I think some of you guys had them alternating. Um, you guys were able to change the speed of the LED. Um, and I think we learned a couple of things, right? We learned about how the microcontroller pins or the legs talk to external components or external, external things like the light. Uh, we also learned about loops and how things repeat over and over again. Um, and, and I think we also learned about how to reuse code examples, right? We didn't really have to write everything from scratch. We were able to take an existing code example um, and actually modify it to whatever it is we wanted to do, which I think is a pretty cool concept. Um, so with that, we're going to jump to project number two, and I'm going to hand it off to Zoom here. And this one's, this one's one of my favorite projects, so get, right. get excited. You. I'm so happy to do this one. <laughs> um, OK, so today, we're not just learning about texture instruments. We're not just learning about Launchpad. But we will make ourselves some musical instruments. Um, and to, you know, to make music, right? we'll need a little help from a friend of the Launchpad. And that is the educational booster pack. Um, so we, we talked about earlier what a booster pack is. A booster pack is something, it's like a little additional tool that you can add onto your launch pad to make it uh, more powerful, right? You can add uh, things like uh, display or light or sensor. So the educational booster pack that each one of you also has um, on your desk uh, has a lot of components and cool stuff that can uh, that, that the launch pad can control and, and do cool stuff with it. We have a display screen up here. We have a buzzer that we will use in this project. And we have a bunch of other uh, cool components that we will use um, in the next couple of projects. Uh, for this project, we will use two things. Um, so feel free to take it out of the box, the white box. And uh, you might be able to notice on the board, uh, on that booster pack, there are two components that we will be using for this lab. And the first one is a potentiometer. And that's a little um, thin wheel that allows you to kind of uh, scroll up and down, just like a volume knob. On the other side, we have a buzzer. So the buzzer is something that makes a sound. It can actually make any kind of uh, sound at any frequency. So the microcontroller can tell it, hey, make me a pitch at 400 hertz. And the buzzer will make a sound at exactly 400 hertz. So what we will do today is that we will read the input from the potentiometer. Uh, and when you scroll the wheel, you're actually changing it up or down or, or lower or higher. And based on that scrolling wheel motion, uh, the launch pad can read that in and tell the buzzer to make a pitch or a sound based on your input. And based on that, we can make our own, our own musical instrument. So just a real quick thing earlier, Adrian mentioned that the, the microcontroller looks like a, the, the chip with about 20 legs coming out on both sides. Uh, so what is also important is that we need to find out uh, what pins or what legs are connected to these components. So uh, this map, it just gives you a good, a quick overview of what the components, or which, which pins the components are connected to. So our potentiometer is connected to pin number five. Um, or it is also known as A3. And you will see this again in the code later in, in our sketch. And this is how you know that uh, Energia is telling the microcontroller, hey, read the input from channel A3. Um, on the other side, for the output side, we have the buzzer connected to pin number 19. Uh, and that is the pin that you will also see in the code in the sketch, where um, the microcontroller is told that, hey, make a sound on pin number 19. All right, so the only hardware change that we have to do is make sure that a jumper is in the right position. So the jumper or the header is this little black uh, thingy that is now connected to uh, a few exposed pins on top of the booster pack. So what you want to do there is to make sure that um, the, the, the black jumper is properly on top. And then there should be two pins by themselves. And then there should be, um, so you, all you have to do is just move the top jumper or the top black uh, header, uh, this guy right here. Uh, unplug it, and then plug it onto the top position. So what it does is, as we will learn later on, uh, these three pins are all connected to our potentiometer, but it's also connected to another component that we will be using later on. So for this lab, we want to connect it to a potentiometer, and that's why we have it put it on top. Uh, for another lab, we might have to put it on the bottom. 
So as uh, similar to before, go ahead and try to find our sketch. Uh, so just follow this trail, uh, file, examples, uh, zero educational BP. And now we're going to chapter nine and project number 19, uh, musical instruments. There are a lot of musical um, examples in that chapter, so be, be careful. Make sure you select the musical instrument sketch. Is everybody, is everybody there? Now you should, uh, you should see an yet another new window open up with new code, right? So let's go through the code really quickly. Uh, you see that this code is quite long, but as a matter of fact, most of the code is actually just uh, green lines, right? As Adrian mentioned before, those are just comments. Those are just what I uh, try to explain and uh, helps you, re reminds you of what's going on. So in a reality, the main code, there are only three lines of code that you really have to look into it uh, to figure out what's going on. And that's all you need to read the information from the potentiometer, process it, and then make music out of it. So let's go line by line. So this is the first line where you, um, you can read out. You are pointing analog read from the channel number A3, and you read that value, and you store it into sensor reading. So what does it mean? What it means is that um, by scrolling that <coughs> little wheel, you're actually changing the value on that sensor, and that value is being read into the microcontroller brain through the analog read function, and the result is stored inside sensor reading. So now sensor reading is the value or the, or the guy that we know uh, what the value was on the potentiometer. Um, second line, this is where the brain is at work. This is where the brain processes this information inside sensor reading and determines what kind of pitch should I make out of this input. And that's where the magic happens. And as a result, it produces this pitch. And this pitch is actually the frequency of the sound uh, of, of, of the note that it's going to tell the buzzer to make. And it's doing that in the last line. Really simple. All it does is make a tone on pin number 19 of the frequency of stored in this pitch and make, it, make that tone last for 100 milliseconds. So really simple, right? Three lines and three simple functions. And now you can make your own instrument. So let's give it a try, shall we? Uh, at this point, you can uh, click on that uh, upload button again, and let's see if we can make some music. Oh, let's make sure the, uh, the booster packs are plugged into the launch pad as well. Um, so right. it, it just stacks on top. So remember, these are plug-in modules. So uh, just make sure all of the pins are connected. And if you just plug it in, if you can there you go. Plug in the yeah, other yeah, way it just around. Yes, right that's top. right. Uh, rotate it. I guess you rotate yep, you it. have it right. Just push it all just the way like down. Just like that, and then just plug it right in. So be sure to try to tr try to turn it to see what happens on the uh, on the sound side. There you go. Oh, it's this, this guy right here. All right. So um, if we want to stop the music, uh, what we can do is just unplug uh, the launch pad from the USB cable. Um, you can resume this at home uh, at any time. So let's let's pause with the music for a while. All right. <laughs> Oh, I feel peace, so much peace. Um, so what did we learn in this really short lab? I mean, we learned a lot of concepts, right? We actually, uh, first and foremost, most importantly, we learned how to make music. And this is actually how a lot of musical instruments are made, with just maybe a little bit more intelligence in there. But the, the key concept is the same, right? You have some input. Uh, it could be a, like a keyboard, and you just press it on the keys. Um, and the brain inside the keyboard controller uh, will decipher that. It's like, oh, you press on this C4 note, so I need to make this frequency of this you know, 400 hertz, for example. And that's how tones are being made. Um, we learn about inputs and outputs. And we have already used input and outputs for a couple of times already. But the key concept of any microcontroller application or anything that you will ever make is this input and this output. As long as you identify what are your inputs and you figure out how to read that input in, and you figure out how to process the input. Um, and then the last step is figure out what are your outputs. What are the things that you want to um, express to the world, whether it's light, whether it's display, whether it's messages or wireless. Uh, once you figure out the inputs and outputs, you can kind of create any ab application you want. Um, and the last but not least, we learned a couple of functions. 
Um, these will be helpful later on if you want to do your own projects. So these are the analog read, which allows you to read in any analog signal, and tone, which may allow you to make music. Um, so there are a few other musical um, examples that you can do. Um, it, feel free to give it a try. Um, if you know the notes to the song, right, you can make your own song. So instead of using the scroll wheel to figure out what notes you are um, and turn into a musical instrument, you can actually tell the microcontroller to play a song. Uh, so by putting all the notes in, you can actually make a tune like you know, birthday music or like a Star Wars theme. So give it a try. And so all of these examples are also already in Energia. You just have to follow the same path again and go to chapter 9. And there are a few examples of uh, other musical projects that you can, you can open up. All right, so our challenge to you out of this exercise is when you get home, uh, try to find your favorite tune, try to find your favorite piece of music, and then find all the notes and try to compile that list of notes and put it into Launchpad and make your own song. How cool would that be? All right, uh, so let's, let's pause with the music and move on to the next project. So Adrian will, will guide you through the next, and it, this one is even more fun, and you get to do, you can make your own game out of this. Awesome. So uh, moving on to project number three, we're going to create a magic eight ball. Um, I don't know if you guys still play with that, <laughs> but it's basically this, this round black object that you shake whenever you have a question, um, and it'll give you a random answer, right? Yes, no, maybe so. So we're actually going to recreate that with our launch pad with the help of the educational booster pack plugin module. Um, so uh, here are the sort of ingredients for this uh, example. Right, we've got the launch pad brain. It's going to work with the booster pack. Um, and we're going to combine those two things together to create a magic eight ball. Um, and previously, right, we created a musical instrument. And that musical instrument was using an input, which was the little scroll wheel, the knob, and doing a little bit of thinking in the microcontroller brain, and then outputting sound through the buzzer. So we were going to take that same idea of inputs and outputs with our musical instrument here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called an accelerometer. So that's what this little tiny black rectangle is on your, on your educational booster pack. Um, and an accelerometer is something that you might see in a video game controller. It's in a lot of cell phones today. That's how you kind of play games by moving your phone around. Um, it's because they have something called an accelerometer inside. Um, and we have one here on the educational booster pack. So we can actually use that accelerometer, which detects motion and communicates that motion information to the microcontroller brain. Um, and based on that type of input that we're getting from the accelerometer, the microcontroller brain can say, oh, I'm being shaken, or I'm being tilted in one direction. Um, and with that information, we can do whatever we want with it. Right? Zung mentioned one, one idea. Could, I could use that accelerometer data to change the frequency of my, of my music. So instead of turning the wheel, maybe I'm making a musical instrument whenever I do jumping jacks or something. Um, so that's, that's one example. So we're going to use the accelerometer today to detect when the launch pad is being shaken, um, just like the regular Magic 8 ball. Um, and then lastly, we're going to output yes, no, or maybe so to the display, the liquid crystal display, or the LCD. Um, and, and basically, we're going to, to have that same input do a little bit of thinking when shaken. I'm going to output a random display to the LCD module. So these are kind of the, the main components for this specific example or project. Um, and then also, uh, just like what Zoom talked about earlier in the, in, the, in the last lab, these different inputs and outputs are connected to different legs of the microcontroller. Uh, the accelerometer, for example, is connected to pin number 2, 5, and 6. And that's how the code knows which pins do I need to be looking at and, and thinking about whenever I'm doing my, exam, uh, my example project. Um, similarly, on the LCD side, this also has a couple of uh, connections to the microcontroller. And this sort of map just tells you where these things are connected, so that when you go to your code, you know exactly where things are connected. So it's a, it's a pretty helpful map to have. Um, so again, first thing we're going to do, I think most of you already have your educational booster pack plugged in. Uh, but this time, we're going to have to move this little black jumper again. So this little black connector, we're going to move to, uh, I think it's just that top one. We're going to move it down a notch to its original position. Um, and this is basically going to tell the educational booster pack that I don't want to talk to the little knob anymore. I want to talk to the accelerometer. So we're basically just choosing a different form of input by, uh, by moving that connector. So yeah, perfect. Looking good. Looking good as well. Awesome. So we're, we're in good shape. 
Um, so just like before, we're going to go to Energia, our little software tool, and we're going to follow this trail to a new example project uh, called Magic 8-Ball. And you can get there by following this path. Um, and that'll open up the, the code that'll tell the launch pad to become a Magic 8-Ball now um, instead of a musical instrument. <laughs> Awesome. So once you guys have that, you can plug your launch pad into the computer um, and hit the play button or that download button with the arrow. So that should silence the music um, and change the launch pad from a musical instrument to a magic eight ball. Cool. And before we start shaking our launch pad, let's think about what we have to do. The first thing we have to do is tell the launch pad that, hey, you have a display connected to you. And that's happening in the code. That's the first one of the first things we do. Um, then we say, an intro text, the intro message on the display. We're going to say, hey, welcome to the magic launch pad, or something along those lines. Um, and then we're going to get to the real sort of intelligence or the smartness of this application. We're going to read the accelerometer. And the accelerometer has what we call three axes or axi. Um, there is x, y, and z, right? So there's three directions of motion that our accelerometer can, can detect. Um, and we're going to do a lot of math, actually. Or actually, we're not doing much math. The launch pad will do some math. Um, that's going to combine all of these different motions of direction um, and, and figure out whether or not our launch pad is being shaken. So that's where we can actually use some physics. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the resultant vector, multiplying different angles in different directions to figure out where the true sort of final direction is. Um, and our launch pad can actually do that um, in the code using some math. Um, and if the specific output or if that output vector is exceeding a particular strength, that's how we know that our launch pad is actually being shaken. Um, and if so, if it is being shaken to a certain degree or to a certain level, that's how we know that, hey, I should probably display a, a, a random message now. Um, and that's all happening inside of the code in front of you today. Um, so the first thing that we'll go ahead and do is we're going to hit the, uh, the arrow button. I think you guys already did that. Um, and before you can do it, just uh, unplug and replug in your launch pad. And I think that should, uh, that should get it going. Cool. Does everyone say shake the magic launch pad on their uh, display? So that's the first message that our example sketch tells the launch pad to do is say, hey, shake the magic launch pad. Um, and then if you shake it, it'll give you a random answer, yes, no, or maybe. Um, so you can, if you can think about a question you want to ask it, like, will I work at TI maybe in the future? You can try to shake it. Hopefully it says yes. So that's it. I mean, that's a magic eight ball. Just like that, we were able to change our launch pad from a musical instrument to a different interactive project. Um, so, so now that we have this code example, I'm going to challenge you guys to, uh, to go into the code um, and actually try to figure out where you have to change it so that instead of saying yes, no, maybe, maybe it says, what kind of lunch am I going to have today? Pizza, spaghetti, or ice cream? Um, and if you actually find that place in the code, try to modify it and see if it works. Um, and then suddenly, instead of a magic eight ball, it's a lunch selector. Did you get potatoes? And we, we've done this lab a couple of times. And sometimes you know, people put ice cream for all the choices. So no matter what, it always says ice cream. It's a good idea. Or spaghetti tacos, if that's what you want. Ice cream, pizza, cool. So I'll give you a little hint here. Mm -hmm. So this random uh, command. So this is going to return a random number between a 0, 1, 2. Um, so based on the random number that gets generated, it's going to store it into result. And then this function here called switch is going to take that number result. If it was a 0, it'll say potatoes. If it was a 2, it'll say pizza. Um, if it was 3, then it'll say ice cream. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is actually change that number 3 to a 4. Okay. Um, and then that'll tell the result that, hey, I can return values 0, 1, 2, and 3 now instead of just 0, 1, and 2. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you just change that to 4 and then change that number to 4 down here. Oh, no, no I think you're fine, actually. Yeah, good job. Yeah, that's the only thing you have to change. Good job. Okay. Nice. So we need. All right. Already? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I guess I'll close this one out. Um, cool, guys. Awesome. So you just created a magic eight ball. It went from yes, no, maybe so. It became a lunch chooser. Some of you guys did what sports should I play next? Awesome stuff. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. So this was another example of inputs and outputs and how you could take an existing code example to create something a little bit more unique for your specific application or use case. We have learned a little bit about Launchpad today. We have also went to, gone to the three labs, right, and figuring out what simple things and really easy things that you can immediately do with Launchpad. So where do you go from here? So 
you can actually learn a whole lot about Launchpad. And if you take the Launchpad home, uh, we encourage you to do a lot more fun stuff with the Launchpad. And where do you find the information? Uh, you can go to, uh, you can go online. Uh, there's a, a wonderful website out there called 430.com, and there are about 20,000 members, uh, students, young kids, or even like engineers who just go in there, contribute, and uh, share information and share ideas or projects. So if you have any questions or if you have any ideas or uh, projects in mind, go in there, find out, and you can get started with your launchpad like that. Um, TI.com is also a good website. Um, you can go in there and find information about the different launch pads, different booster packs, uh, what are the software that you can use with your launch pad. So yeah, go online and download all this stuff and you can, you can immediately start making with the launch pad. Um, last but not least, the software we're using today is called Energia and it's completely free and you can download it from energia.nu. Um, and if you have a computer, you have a Mac or Linux, you can, down, you can download a version for any of the computers you have at home. And we also have a book. So uh, if, you, if uh, you guys are readers, definitely ch check out the book. Uh, the book wa actually walks through all the content that you, uh, you saw today, all the projects, all the um, lessons that we gave you today. Uh, that's all part of the book, so definitely check it out. And with that, uh, thank you for coming today. I hope, we hope that you learned a little bit about Launchpad. Uh, most, uh, and hopefully you had a little bit of fun making cool projects with the Launchpad and the Booster Pack today. Uh, most importantly, we would like you to get out of here just a little bit inspired, and hopefully when you get home, you will be um, just excited and get the Launchpad and make something cool with it. And if you do, let us know and share it with us. Um, send us. Send us an email or just share it with the world. Thank you.